Hi, this is Erica Drobo, and today we're talking about drive error handling in a storage array. So I'm going to walk you through how we handle errors in a Drobo storage array. And, and one of the big things about, about error handling with regards to drives is it's a redundant storage array, and, and one of the values of that is if you have a single drive failure or even two simultaneous drive failures, uh, the array can protect you from losing any data or, or even having a downtime. So I wanted to give you a, an in-close look at how we do that in our arrays. And when, when, when your application, your server is uh, writing data to the array or reading data off the array, it's interacting with, with all the drives in the array. And, and sometimes when you issue a write to a drive, you may get an error or you, you try and read from the drive and it gives you an error or it doesn't even give you the data you're, you are, uh, you're looking for. Or sometimes the drive goes unresponsive. And, and, and there's a lot of things we can do in the Drobo uh, to ensure that we get the data that, that you need accurately and can write the data properly. Uh, so as, as drives error occur, for each drive in a Drobo, we're creating a counter or a table. You know, and sometimes you get a, you know, one drive error or sometimes the drive's unresponsive and we may need to you know, reset it. Um, or the drive just may be not responsive, may time out, and we have to reissue a command, and and you know, and we you know, we'll track these as as they go on the drive, and sometimes you may even encounter a bad block on a drive where uh, you know we go to try and get the data, and the data is just just gone, or the data is the data is wrong, and and um, but or a Drobo is redundant, so we can then take that redundant copy, map those blocks as bad, copy them to another location on a on a good drive or on a good part of that same drive, and you can continue on, and you know, and we can keep keep counting this stuff. And then at some point, there's a point in time where a drive be becomes in, a, in an unhealthy state. And even though the drive, we can read and write to it sometimes, you'd want to mark that drive as, as bad. And when that, when that drive is marked as bad and we want a, another drive to be utilized, on the front of a drive, we'll just, let's say if it's this drive that, you know, that went bad, we'll turn the light red, we'll blink the light red, alerting you that you need to remove that drive. Now, Drobo will automatically rebuild with the available free space in the Drobo, rebuild back to a, a protected state, and the rest of the lights will go green, and, and that, that happens automatically. The other nice thing that Drobo does is when, when the system's idle, when the array is not being uh, frequently accessed, you know, being written to or, or read from, in the background, Drobo will go and check uh, areas of the, of the drive that haven't been read in a long time to ensure that that data can still be accessed. If Drobo happens to stumble across an area of a drive that, oh, that data's not there anymore, we can then take its redundant copy and remap it. So when you're, when you're actively using the array, we're always checking the drives, and even when you're not actively using the array, we're leveraging that free time to go, to go, to go around the array and, and find, find challenging areas. So uh, Drobo is a very automated storage array, and this is just one, way, one of the ways Drobo uh, operates behind the scenes to ensure it stays as healthy as possible.